Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles issue number seven from Mirage Comics. So this came out May 1986. This is uh, the fallout from the last issue where the turtles fought the Triceratons in the Colosseum and then a bunch of them got teleported back to the, their home planet, back to Earth, back into the TCRI building. And that's where the issue actually starts. We start on the outside of the TCRI building where we have a news reporter who's talking about the phenomenon that's going on. Basically, there is a, like a, a huge light that shot out from the building and no one knows what's going on. So all the cops showed up and the cops were trying to like find communicate, trying to communicate with the people inside, but they refuse. When the cops try to go in, the building basically went into shutdown mode and barricaded itself. So now the police are thinking that there might be some kind of like terrorists group in, in, involved inside that shot the beam of light and uh, the beam of light was basically the the first one was the turtles being teleported to um, the planet where there was the triceratons and uh, their enemies uh, the federation and then um, as the police were outside another beam of light shines and this is uh, the turtles and the triceratons being beamed back into the building so the cops are basically prepared to shoot their way inside and april's watching all this on the news and she's kind of like freaking out because she knows or she has a strong feeling that the turtles are inside and she needs to get to them because she doesn't want them to get caught by the police anyways we cut back to inside where the tele uh, the turtles and the triceratons are teleported back in and the utrons are there and the utrons are basically trying to calm them down they're like hey like don't freak out just remain stationary like our blasters are sent to render you unconscious just be calm and we'll explain everything to you but the triceratons believe that this is some kind of a special federation force they believe that they've been captured and after a while the the leader looks around and he realizes hey like we didn't come here by a ship we were teleported these people have the transmit so then we get a huge fight with the triceratons fighting against the utrams and eventually the turtles uh, join in and they help the Utrams by fighting off the, the Triceratons. So yeah, we get some pages of battle going on. And I love this panel right here. This is so freaking cool. I want to get this image right here blown up and put into like a poster. Because this, this is just such a cool image. I really love it. I was debating on making this like the thumbnail. But I was like, nah, I'm, I'm just going to stick to the, the covers. But yeah, I love this, like just the detail and stuff. And even the colorized version looks really sweet too. Um, but yeah, like I said, like I, I would love to get this image right here, this, this splash page blown up into a poster. It would just be so cool. But eventually the, uh, the turtles, they're able to kill some of the Triceratons. Like we even get like a scene where Ra uh, Raph is stabbing the hell out of one with his size. So yeah, eventually um, the Utrams are able to shoot some of the others. So the Triceratons, they're either dead or stunned, depending on if it was the turtles who got them or the uh, the Utrum. The Utrum stunned them, turtles killed them. <laughs> and that's still kind of weird to me because, like I said, I'm a huge Turtles fan. I've mentioned this so many times. I freaking love the turtles. But I just, I, for some reason, I never read the original comics. Like, all of my love for the turtles came from the cartoons, the movies, and the video games never from the actual source material so of course all of my exposures to the the turtles was for like kid friendly products so i always see the turtles as more like a, a kid friendly media obviously i know that the mirage comics is a lot more grittier and violent and stuff like that like i i before I got into reading this series and doing these reviews, I already knew that it was going to be a lot grittier and darker. But it still kind of shocks me that the turtles have no problem just murdering people. <laughs> I mean, obviously, they're not going around killing innocents, but just the fact that there there's none of this like, hey, we're going to try to just stun them or try to just knock them out or incapacitate them now they just go straight for the kills like seeing rafts stab one of the triceratons multiple times in the torso is just like okay wow but yeah they're they're able to stop the triceratons and then the neutrons basically uh say um yeah we know who you are because we have someone who told us about you and 
Splinter shows up, and the Turtles are, of course, happy to see their sensei. And Master Splinter basically tells his story. And his story was that uh, he got attacked by the Mausers. This was back in issue number two. And he was able to fight them off. But they, they injured him in the process, and four more were coming and surrounded him and were about to kill him when all of a sudden they just turned around and left. And the reason why is because in issue number two, um, Stockman, when he realized that objective was going to be destroyed and stuff like that, he hit the self-destruct button, which allowed all the Mausers to come in, which basically called all the Mausers back to the lab to, to, to eat everything there. So to kill the, the turtles and like all of the evidence and stuff like that of, of his wrongdoings. So the turtles saved their 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 master by uh, getting Sockman to, to recall them. But his wounds were too grievous and he passed out. Then eventually the Utrons found him in the sewers and brought him. Again, we see all this in earlier issues. So uh, the thing we didn't know about was that Splinter, upon waking up and realizing that the people who saved him aren't humans but aliens, was uh, too much for him. Like the shock was too great and he passed out. And the Utrams feared that he, he might have had a cart failure or a stroke. So they put him into suspended animation so that they can observe and care for him. That's why he was in the tube when the turtles came into the building. They were about to let him go and explain everything when the turtles hit the translocation control panel and got teleported. And yeah, that's, that's the whole situation with Splinter. Meanwhile, the Utrams tell their story, basically 15 or no 20 years ago they came to earth to just observe humans and the, the planet and stuff like that the inhabitants when um their ship actually crash land and a bunch of them died some of them survived but their craft was like completely destroyed they had no way of communicating with their planets so they did what they can to build these exoskeletons and they put on the the human skin and stuff like that so they can blend in with humanity and they basically took up jobs, like just regular jobs on Earth. And over the years, they gathered all their money together so that they can build the TCRI building so that they can build a galactic communicator as well as a translocation device. And uh, 15 years ago, while they were transporting the, the last of their salvage, a blind man crosses the street. And this is basically the turtle's origin story, which also happens to be Daredevil's origin story. And for anyone who doesn't know, turtles copied a lot from daredevil you know the, the the whole origin story with the truck the blind man and the the ooze the um master splinter basically being like uh splits anyways so yeah we, we basically get a, a retelling of the, uh, the origin story with the blind man crossing a man jumping in front of the way to to push him out the um ooze canister hitting him in the back of the head hitting a, a boy's bowl fish bowl of turtles that fell down to the sewers and then the turtles and splinter got mixed up in the goop and got mutated blah 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 we, we, we know all that anyways the Utrams tell them that uh, they finally managed to contact their home world and the home world was like surprised at how well that they were able to blend in with the humans and they wanted them to remain in the city so that they can just continue to observe the planet Unfortunately, that problem kind of went out the window when the turtles hit the translocation device, shot out the beam, and now brought the attention of all of the army and the police and National Guard and all that stuff. And so that's the situation that they're in now. So we have the, the National Guard outside. They're getting ready to, to go in. They basically are launching rockets at the door so that they can blow a hole in and get inside. Meanwhile, the Utrams inside are trying to uh fix up their their translocator their their transmats so that they can beam out of there and not get caught by the police and that's basically where the rest of this issue goes so we see the national guard eventually able to break through the door they get into the building when the self-defense robots pop out and shoot at the the, the army and they're able to just stun them because the utrams aren't like you know dealing any lethal blows they're just shooting stun rays basically and eventually the utrons with the help of honeycut are able to fix the transmat and they start it up and basically set the location to take them back to their planets and they tell the turtles like you gotta jump in with us not only will the thing be up for a few seconds but we also program the power level on this building 
to self-destruct so that it blows up all of our evidence so people can't use this technology and know about aliens and all that stuff like we got to make sure that all the evidence gets destroyed so you need to trust us jump into the portal with us and eventually the turtles don't have any other options so they jump in just as the army gets inside realizes that the building is going to self-destruct they all evacuate as the building blows up and then we cut to april and april is kind of watching the news hearing what's going on and kind of a scared about what happened to her friends when all of a sudden she hears a loud noise coming from the bathroom and she looks inside and she sees the turtles and master splinter and basically what happened was this is my assumption when they teleported back to the utron planet honeycut was able to use his knowledge of making the transmat to make another one to beam them back to earth so yeah there we go there's issue number seven a uh, really good issue. I'm surprised that the Utrams already kind of ended. I wonder, again, for anyone who doesn't know, if this is like your first review in this series, I am doing blind reviews. So basically, I am reading the issue and then immediately recording my thoughts on it, my reviews on it. So at this point in time, at the time of this, I literally just finished reading this issue and I'm just turned on OBS and recorded this. So I haven't read issue number eight. I don't know what goes on from here. Everything is brand new to me. So I'm assuming the Utrams are going to come back at some point because they are somewhat popular characters. At least they, they came up a lot in like the cartoons and stuff. So just to have them for a few issues doesn't seem like I would assume that they're, they're going to pop up later on. I'm assuming we're going to get more of the Triceratons. I guess all the Triceratons are dead now. Even the ones that the Utrams, well, the ones that got teleported. Because the ones that the Utrams stunned, they were in the building when it blew up. And they didn't take the Utrams with them. They didn't take the Triceratoms with them. So I'm assuming they're dead. But of course there's also a bunch of Triceratoms back on their home planet. So yeah, is this the end of uh, our space arc? Our space adventure arc? I'm assuming we're going to get more later on. Are we going to get more of like stories focused in New York? And then introduce more of the space stuff? Kind of a bummer i kind of like the space stuff i always love like i don't know why but i, I love space fantasy sci-fi space operas just anything to you know with space like space adventures and i especially love reading stuff like that from like older comics like comics from the 80s the 70s the 60s the 50s just to see like what they think like you know the future and space and stuff is going to be like so i kind of would have liked to see more space adventures with the turtles I'm hoping that we get some of that soon. I guess it would be nice to kind of have some more, you know, adventures set in New York City and stuff like that. Just because we didn't really get too much of it. It seems like just as we were about to get more, they got teleported to another planet. So I guess we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, this was a good issue. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I don't think that there has been any issues in this series so far that I have not enjoyed. This pretty much just feels like a... This series is going to be me gushing over every single issue. I'm pretty soon sure we're going to hit like some point where like the the quality dips or something in terms of like storytelling and stuff. Or maybe I'm wrong and maybe every single issue is just going to be fantastic. But yeah, so far I'm loving this series. I'm still kicking myself in the butt for taking this long. Like especially as a huge Turtles fan, like as someone who absolutely freaking loves the Ninja Turtle franchise and it's my favorite franchise ever. The fact that it took me 35 years of my life before I actually read the original comics that the whole series started from, it's like, damn, man, why, why couldn't I have gone into this sooner? Like, Why did it take me so long? Oh, well, be better late than never, right? So yeah, this is, oh, I'm loving this run. This is freaking fantastic. I really can't wait to read more. I'm only seven issues in, and at first I was thinking I'm just going to do the, you know, volume one Mirage and just, you know, see what people think. But even if this series doesn't do all that great in terms of like view count and likes and stuff like that, I almost want to just keep going and check out volume two and uh, skip volume three because volume three was the Urban Legends, which I already did. Uh, and then go to volume four because I heard volume four is really good, too. Um, I heard basically volume one and volume four are like the best. I guess we'll 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 see. But yeah, I, I love this 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 series has been so freaking fantastic. This issue was really good too. I liked it. Oh yeah, I 
I don't know how much more I can say. I am just like gushing over everything now. Like again, the the artwork is is freaking awesome. I love Eastman's art style. Maybe that was what it was. As uh, when I was smaller and I saw some of the turtle stuff, like the comics, I didn't know that that was where they started from to begin with. And then like I saw the artwork and I was like, I don't, I don't really like this art. It looks just too weird. But now as an adult, like looking back at it, it's like the artwork is really good. Like I like it. it's it's very stylistic and and unique and um like even the black and white just really works and this is someone like who doesn't really care for black and white when it comes to comics which is weird because i'm a huge manga fan and of course manga is nothing but black and white for the most part you very rarely i mean sometimes i guess you'll get some color in the very first few pages but usually it's everything black and white but for comics, like I, I just, I prefer color, but this, like I read the colored version of this and I read the black and white version and they're both really good. And I guess, yeah, I like the black and white more actually. It's just something about it just, yeah. Especially again, that this one page, like I really want to see, like I really want to get this page blown up and made into a poster. I'm sure someone's probably done that already, but this, page right here just is so freaking good but yeah there you go good writing good arts freaking love the the adventures that they've been going on so far can't wait to see what the next issue is gonna bring me i freaking love this this series this run so far and i'm hoping it holds up this has been just an absolute blast i i got i love doing this so yeah there you go Issue number seven of Ninja Turtles by Mirage Comics, volume one, came out in May 1986. Yeah. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Tell me what you think. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Later. So what did you guys think of that video? I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys haven't already, please subscribe. Hit that bell for a notification. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And if you didn't enjoy the video, thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next video is more to your liking. Feel free to check out the playlist that you guys see, and I hope to see you guys next time. Later.